This is my load monitoring device which I developed as per purpose to monitor the maximum power of various output power sources. The system is preset using a 4x4 keypad module which has the manual input of any power rating for each output power sources. Whenever each output source exceeds the maximum preset power, the system will automatically switch off the particular line and as such monitors the building power usage against overloading. In this video, I'm going to show you how I assembled this project and also the lines of code which was programmed to carry out the special task of triggering on and off an output source against electrical overload. Let's start this project by first assembling the required components. I will provide the circuit diagram shortly at the end of the video. For the current measurement, I'm using CT103 sensor which has a maximum current rating of 5 amps. Like one of my previous design, I am also measuring my AC voltage using a simple transformer. I've explained how to use a transformer as an AC voltage sensor in this previous project. So feel free to come back to this point in this video to click the card up here in order to access it and also do that shortly after this video. Now I started soldering the components using this schematic diagram. I started off by soldering the current sensor, NPN transistor, some resistors and the relays. Next. I used the cut-out pinout extension to solder the Arduino nano board. After completing this part of the project, I cut out the section of the board that I will not be using for this project. Next, I soldered the I2C module together with the LCD board as I have it looking just like this. I assembled other discrete electronics components as I have them soldered. Lastly, I soldered the bridge rectifier part of the project and it's cool to have the board well organized as well as being able to easily eject the Arduino Nano board. I used three different color of wires to distinguish each line output and hence I have the red line, blue line and the yellow line. Now, it's time to program the project. This is the first code which I wrote for this project. I won't explain this particular code because it didn't work out fine just the way I wanted. As I uploaded my code to the hardware, I was targeting to achieve these various tags which include Return tracking of load line cutoff, EE prompt storage of preset power values and keypad key in of values and also for the navigation. I was able to only achieve Return tracking of the load line cutoff, EE prompt storage of preset power values, but not with keypad as I use push button while testing. The read time while using the Arduino internal clock wasn't well synchronized to normal time, and as such, I had to use an ROTC module for replacement. I integrated the module on my project, and this time it was working perfectly. But still yet, I couldn't have my menu navigation work out fine for me using the keypad module. Luckily for me, I have Martins, my friend who is really good in programming and I will share his LinkedIn profile in the video description. He assisted me to rework on my code just as he would try to explain. So this delay function, what it actually does is more of a kind of a scheduling delay as it's, as it's delaying, it's also running other functions in the background to check. With this input on this project, I can now key in my preferred values for each line. Here, I set the load to not exceed 70 watts. The current load which I'm in use is 65 watts and as I plug my phone to add to the load, this was the result. The load added up to my phone charger wattage which is approximately 10 watt. 
As the cumulative wattage on the load rise above 70, the line got cut off and as such, I can confirm that the project is ready for sale up. Here is the code modifications from Martins. I will try to explain each line of code as I attach comment to further explain some main parameters and variables. At the beginning of the code, all the libraries in use were included just as you can see. Other variables were separated as I also indicate their uses. This is the variable to read the voltage using the transformer. This is now the line of code which matches included in order to read other functions while I'm using this delay. This function controller is used to compare the preset power to the in use power for each line. At the setup function, all the hardware in use were initialized. This is the void loop, all the created functions were called as per required. This function intro is used for the display, it was created for proper navigation. The interface function is used to display values of voltage, current and power on the LCD display. Timer function is used to lock the time of occurrence just as I mentioned earlier. And lastly, the key in function is used for the input and navigation of the project using the keypad. There are other parts of the code which was commented as Martin spotted them and mentioned that they won't be necessarily in use and as such they will affect the current working of the project if they are left uncommented. With this done now, let's package the project. Here, I'm using a 6x9 adaptable box and I will drill holes to fit in the output for each line. After the whole assembly, I have the ball looking just like this. Now, to test the project, I now brought in three light bulbs with different power ratings. As I plug the 100 watt lamp, I got the corresponding values, which displayed a bit accurately, just that my current sensor calibration wasn't perfect. The 60 watt lamp bulb, which is connected to the blue line, recorded 75 watt which is as a result of my calibration. And lastly, I have the other ball which is also a 100 watt lamp. From the programming, clicking button A, I'll be able to read the preset value for the red line. Clicking button B, I'll be able to read the blue line. And clicking button C, I'll be able to read the yellow line. My phone charger is 10 watt as I plug it to the red line to add up to the recorded value of 117 watt. The value recorded now went above 120 watt and as such the line was automatically cut off. Restarting the project, I decided to navigate through the menu. D key calls the time function as I can read the time. As I click the start button, I call the function to reset the values. After I have reset and saved all the lines, the device will now trigger and have the device turn on. Since the values for the 100W lamp went above 100 and 90W respectively, the lines got cut off. Remember, my calibrations weren't accurate, so we should be able to understand the reason for the difference. 
I tried again to increase the load ratings for each line and this time the system settings was able to hold in for two bulbs. For each line, at instant reception of electricity, there is always an electrical surge which stays for a very tiny second. This electrical surge affects the current drawn which relatively affects the total power recorded at the very tiny seconds the system started. I could have fixed this if I have added some kind of a delay, let's say 5 seconds before taking my reading once the device starts. Feel free to make adjustments on the code if you wish to build upon this and also fix the problem. For those that wish to build upon this project, I'm going to drop a link on the video description where you are going to be able to download the schematic diagram and also the code for this project. Feel free to drop your comments on how I can upgrade this project. I will be glad to read them on the comment section. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also click the little bell icon in order to personally get notified when I make upload on the next project. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next project. Do have a blissful day.